Hi everyone, welcome to Amateur Decorating Like a Pro. Thanks for giving me a chance to get some much needed rest. Now it's time to get back to work with another furniture transformation. And this time I'm going to focus on my foyer. It's been a while. I guess the last time I really did it up was when I did the Independence Day setup in the foyer. So now I've started to work on a table and that is still a work in progress. But in the meantime, I need to do something other than having bare walls and an empty floor. So I found the Starburst mirrors here at Michael's 50% off. I also found these here at Walmart and I was really impressed with them. Now I laid out some existing spears that I already owned and I decided to see which combination would best suit the foyer. Now I really love the mixtures of textures with these eccentric starburst mirrors and of course mixing them with the spears. But the problem is they are two different colors. Well maybe that would have worked in another room but in the foyer I decided to go a little monochromatic. So I spray painted them using that Krylon silver paint that you normally use on furniture. Now I needed to make two more spears, but I wanted them to be smaller ones. So I quickly created those upstairs in the craft room. And since it was after midnight, I painted them with metallic paint right from Hobby Lobby. And that was quick and easy. Now I will be sure to link the video to this video that contains the DIY for making these larger spears. Now on to our next transformation. Now our foyer is very narrow. I love it because it means I don't have to put a lot of stuff out there to fill it up. But then secondly, you need to really make sure that the hallway is clear, especially when you come down the stairs and suddenly just turn the corner. So guys, I decided to use my grandmother's petite little bench. I remember this bench when I was a little girl and I absolutely love it. So I had to do a few touch-ups using some Gorilla Glue as well as some of the wood filler. You see those screws have been removed a couple of times and that means that basically they could have fallen out of the bench at any time. Add the wood filler to the side of the hole that connects to the seat cushion. Now I'm not a messy painter at all. All I did was set up shop right there in our breakfast area. Guys, I painted it with a simple coat of gray paint that was already in the garage. And then I coated it with the silver metallic paint. And I think it's by Elegance and I purchased it from Hobby Lobby. I've had it and it's time to get rid of some of that old paint anyway. Now I'm using the original seat cushion as a template. I laid it on top of this one inch foam that I had in the garage. Now I'm actually turning that one inch foam into two inch foam. And here's how. You trace out your cushion on one of the pieces and then you trace it out on a second piece. And then you use that spray adhesive to fuse the two pieces together. Now let me be clear. This foam is brand new, but it's been exposed to sunlight in my garage. That's why you see that yellowish color. It's still very good foam. And believe it or not, they do this a lot in your professional upholstery places. Now, I only took off one layer of fabric from this original seat cushion. This is the original cushion that my grandmother had. There is no foam or batting on this cushion. So I'm going to spray the top with spray adhesive. Now I'm adding my new foam. So now this cushion is going to be raised up two inches plus. I love it. I really like preserving some of my grandparents' memories. It's just really a blessing to have these things. Now for this very next step, I'm using some old batting and this came from the earlier project, I believe vlog number three, where I did the chairs from my living room. So getting rid of all remnants lying around guys, as you can see, I've trimmed away some of the edges of the foam and no, they are not perfect, but the batting is going to take care of that. So we're going to cover that and also keep in mind the holes do not need to be covered where you're going to place this screen 
through. So you definitely want to keep fabric from filling in these areas. Now, if you have slippery hands or you keep a lot of moisturizer on your hands, then you definitely might want to try these gloves. I think we got them from Harbor Freight or Home Depot. I love them, guys. I mean, you can feel the breeze on your hands while you're working. They help you to really grip things. So we're going to load our stapler and I am using one half inch staples in my staple gun. Now there's nothing obstructing the path from the compressor to my upholstery project. Now a couple of you made comments on a video of mine that you were afraid of these kinds of staplers. You wanted one, but you were so afraid. Guys, I made a full video on how you would start it up, how you would use it, and how you would take care of it. I want you guys to feel comfortable with it. It took me a while. This is the second time that I am using it for a project. So I know that you're going to love it and it's just a great investment. I cut away the excess batting around the edges and yeah, this is really looking great and you don't even see those bumpy edges. Now I do love all of the beautiful homes that I see on YouTube decorated with the gray walls. Well, my walls are tan and I look for unique ways to incorporate the gray into my decor as you've already seen. So guys, I found this gorgeous fabric at Hobby Lobby, $39 a yard. I only needed a half yard and I got 40% off of that. So let's just cover our cushion with this. Now, whenever you're buying fabric, sometimes you will notice that your associate in the store may not be mindful of where she's cutting. And if they've taken a sample from the fabric, well, then they don't need to start to measure the fabric at that line. They need to go below it. And that way you'll get the full amount of fabric that you're paying for. And then when you start to cut your fabric for your seat cushion, make sure that you line up the medallion in the very center before you make the cut. You want to line up the designs in the center of your fabric. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. You see how the designs are complete? One, two, and three in the fabric. Put those in the very center so you don't have like an end of the design kind of starting in the center or either you've got half of it over here. You want to make sure that this nice little area here is the center so you can see there from the edge on the end there that you wouldn't have an entire design. But if you start here, you'll have a complete design in the middle. So that's why I think it's important to kind of monitor where they're cutting your fabric so that you'll have a complete design and everything is centered. I like that a lot. That's gonna be perfect. So basically, I'm going to cut right along this line here. So it will be centered. And I have just enough fabric left over to make a throw pillow to match. To start, staple the fabric to the seat cushion in the center on all four sides. As always, I will not attempt to do an upholstery project without my trusty pliers. They eliminate strain on my wrist. Now staple all the way down each side, leaving open about a half inch for each of the corners. You see, you want to fold in a corner like I'm doing here and then fold in the sides and add your staples. Now keep in mind that I do not want to cover up those holes where the screw is going to be placed. I'm trimming away the excess fabric and earlier you saw me trim away the batting. So that hold is clear. So now I have no doubt that the cushion is going to lie flush against the actual bench. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add an actual lining to the back of the cushion. I don't want threads hanging out all over the place. It is perfectly fine to use old remnants to be linings for your upholstery project.
Now we are all done. So let's go ahead and add our seat cushion back to our newly transformed bench. And remember, if you have tiled floors or hardwood floors, remember to add surface protectors. I love to use these little felt ones and I keep them in standard supply. Here's our shot before and here we are today. I think my grandmother would be proud. And you can also see, once again, how important it is to center your designs in your fabric in the very center. I just love this. And I really love the combination of the 3D spheres with the starburst mirrors. I like that. It adds a little drama to this very small foyer. Now I love the bench and the pop of color that it gives with the seat cushion. You can also see my umbrella holder there in the corner. I also wanted to make sure that the wall was the focal point and not the light switch or the outlet. So I painted them the same color as the wall. That way they fade away and you focus on what I want you to see. So I hope you love the color combination and the risk that I took to get this done. And in the fall, I look forward to replacing the bench with a very narrow table that I've just started to build. Now to get caught up on my pioneer spirit to get all of these transformation projects done this summer, remember to click the playlist in the top right hand corner of this video and or you can click the playlist that's also located at the end of this video. There's more to come this summer. If you're not a subscriber, I hope you will consider doing so and be inspired to check out some things around your house and add a coat of paint or a piece of fabric. Thanks a lot for watching and as always stay in prayer and stay creative.